Hello and welcome. Today I've got another face ratings and analysis video for you guys and to avoid wasting your time I'm just going to jump straight into it. So first up we have this guy, Matthew Hussey, who has a channel specialising in dating advice for women and I believe is YouTube's biggest dating coach sitting at 2.2 million subscribers. Now this guy, even based off first impressions, you can tell has a lot of good going for him. So we're going to start with the positives. First of all, let's take a look at his jawline. I believe this is by far his best feature. So ideally, the jawline should be as forwardly grown as possible, giving a masculine and high testosterone appearance. On top of this, he also has excellent jawline definition, which accentuates the positives of this feature even further. Next, let's take a look at his gonian angle, which is this angle formed here between the ramus and the mandible. His gonian angle is at the ideal inclination of 115 degrees which in fact is pretty much bang on the money in terms of what is objectively the most attractive. Not too steep, not too sharp. Leading into the next point, this also gives Matthew a good jawline shape, which ideally should be this trapezium shaped jawline. So these are some of the positives about his jawline. A couple of his other best features include his skull proportions. So as talked about in previous videos, your neurocranium, the back part of your skull, should be equal in size to the splanchnocranium, or in other words, the face part of your skull. So a one-to-one -one ratio is the most ideal. Otherwise, you'll end up looking like that guy from the cartoon Megamind. Finally, his last noteworthy feature is his hair. You know those times when you hear girls talk about that one guy with the most amazing hair? This is exactly the kind of thing they're talking about. His hair looks healthy, has a good texture, and has a high fibre count. So that's it for the positives. Now moving on to some of the negatives. This first one, which I identified almost immediately, is his negative eyebrow tilt. Now, in my previous video about the mathematically perfect eyes, I spoke about how ideally your eyebrows should be slightly upturned, giving a seductive look. But if we take a look at Matthew's, his tilt downwards slightly, which gives a bit of a worried, frightened and preyish appearance. Secondly, he also has a fair amount of lower eyelid exposure. So as we can see beneath his eye, there is a little bit too much of his eyelids on show. And this could be partially genetic, but is most likely the result of ageing. I believe this guy Matthew is currently in his low 30s, closing on in his mid 30s. Next, also related to ageing, is the presence of wrinkles and folds. These are particularly visible around his forehead, his eye area, and these two creases here, which are known as nasolabial folds. And they develop from excessive smiling and the reduction of elasticity in a person's skin caused by ageing. Now before I move on to the last point, I just want to say a couple words about his hairline. So ideally, a man's hairline should be squared off at each of the corners of his face. And now when we take a look at Matthews, at first glance, it looks like this. However, I've noticed in some photos, his hairline might be just starting to recede, particularly in this area, the temple region. Now he's probably only about a Norwood 1.5 on the balding scale at the moment, so it's unlikely people will be able to notice. However, it's still worth mentioning, as it could be a massive cause for concern in the near future. Finally, moving on to the last point, and I'll admit this one too is a little bit pedantic. You have to look real close to be able to notice. But if you do zoom in, you will be able to notice that his nose is ever so slightly raven-shaped, giving a hooked appearance. Secondly, his nasal tip also appears to be downturned. But again, this isn't a major flaw by any stretch. So after all of this is said and done, I'm going to be giving him a final rating of 8 out of 10. In my opinion, he quite comfortably falls into the Chad category. And I know already I'm going to get in the comments people saying that he's a 7. I think he still has the majority of his attractive features to warrant giving him an 8. Like, just take a look at this photo. I think it's obvious that he falls into the Chad category. And besides, as I've talked about in my previous video, it doesn't matter what I say, you say, or how you analyse, or anything like that. The only thing that matters is what women say and how they treat you. And simply by going to the comment section of any one of his videos, you will see hundreds and hundreds of comments from women complimenting him on his appearance, telling him how handsome he is and how cute he is. In fact, I even found this comment where a woman spoke about how he features in her dreams. Lastly, I'd even go as far to say that this guy... 95% of the reason he has been able to build such a large audience is because of his physical attractiveness. Like, I've watched some of his content. His takes are okay, his points aren't bad, but it's nothing crazy and out of this world. 
and in my opinion, most of the women who follow him are being blinded by the halo effect of his looks. Now moving on to person number two, John Anthony Lifestyle, who is a dating coach with just under 30,000 subscribers. Now, this guy doesn't really have any attractive features, so we're just going to jump straight in with the negatives. His biggest issue currently is his body fat percentage, and I would estimate his is around 20% which is just way too high compared with what most women find attractive. And in fact, is almost double compared to what the ideal is of 10 to 12% body fat. This flaw is also causing two more flaws. First, his cheeks have become flat and rounded. And second, it is also causing him to have loose hyoid skin, which is where the skin beneath the jawline droops and sags down, which obviously takes away definition from his jawline. His next largest flaw is his hairline recession. And unlike compared with Matthew, his recession is much more noticeable. Now I have done a little bit of research and I have found out that recently John has got a hair transplant. Now I haven't seen the results of this procedure yet, but compared with other people I've spoken to in the past who have also got a transplant, the results usually are very promising. And I believe is a very good potential solution for balding in males. His next biggest flaw, and this is also loosely tied to his body fat percentage, is that his jawline is way too rounded. So if we take a look at the ideal jawline, it has sharp and defined angles making it up. But compared with John Anthony's, his is way too rounded. Next, his face also has a significant amount of asymmetry. And this is particularly noticeable around the nose and his eye area. Continuing on from his eyes, he also has significant eye bag deposits beneath them. On top of this, his eyes also appear to be slightly too close set. So ideally, your eyes should be roughly one eye's breadth apart from one another. But John's appear to be ever so slightly too close set. Going back to his jawline, his chin to philtrum ratio is too large. And for those who don't know what the philtrum is, it's this tiny little bit of skin here between the nose and the upper lip. The ideal ratio between these two things is roughly 2.5 to 1. But when we take a look at John Anthony's, his is roughly two times that amount at a ratio of 4.5 to 1, which makes him look like he has a disproportionately large chin. Next feature, the gonian angle that we've already spoken about, which ideally should have a steepness of 115 degrees. John Anthony's is too obtuse at 135 degrees. Going back to the eyes, he also has too much upper eyelid exposure. This is also partially causing another flaw, which is the fact that his eyes are too far away from his eyebrows. Whereas ideally, your eyes and eyebrows should be close to one another, giving a dominant and masculine look. Finally, for his eyes, he also has scleral show just above his lower eyelid, which is where the white bit of his eye shows beneath his pupil. And this has the effect of making him look tired. His last two flaws is that his nose is too flat against his face, and similar to Matthew, he also has the nasolabial folds, which are the creases formed on his cheeks. So after all of this, my final rating for John Anthony is 3 out of 10. And I know a lot of people are going to think that's a harsh rating, but the positive thing is that a lot of these flaws are fixable, and he could definitely reach at least 4, maybe 5 if he started taking care of himself a bit better, namely lowering his body fat percentage. Now, before I move on to the next person, I just wanted to bring up that still, even to this day, I'm still getting emails from people asking me for advice and ratings. So just to clarify, for anyone who still doesn't know, I have a personal rating analysis and advice system over on Fiverr. You send me photos, I send you feedback. The full package, including all of these things, is currently priced at $25. But if you're more on a budget, there are also smaller packages available at a cheaper price. The overwhelming majority of people have been happy with the service so far. I currently have an average rating of 4.9 stars out of 5, with a review sample of over 400. So if this is something that interests you, be sure to check the link in the description box after this video. Now moving on to person number 3, Hamza Ahmed, who has a channel of 100,000 subs specialising in self-improvement, and this guy is in fact one of my favourite channels at the moment. This guy also has a lot of positives going for him. In my opinion, his best feature is his jawline, where similar to Matthew, it has great definition and the ideal trapezium-shaped jawline that we've already spoken about. Hamza also has a good hairline, showing no signs of balding. He has a compact mid-face, which basically measures how close together all of your features are. And the way you measure this is by measuring the distance between the pupils and then comparing that distance with how close together your eyes are away from your upper lip. 
and ideally these two lengths should be equal, a one to one ratio, otherwise your face will appear long, elongated and horseish. And when we compare these measurements to Hamza, he also has that ideal ratio of one to one. Hamza has a great ability to grow facial hair, accentuating his masculine jawline. His eyebrows also have great shape, length and thickness. Lastly, his teeth also appear to be in excellent health, with good shape and no gaps. That's it for the positives, now moving on to some of the negatives. First of all, his eyes aren't deep set enough. They appear to protrude out slightly from his sockets. This gives a buggish appearance. Next, he also has a considerable amount of upper eyelid exposure. I've already spoke about this, so I'm not going to bother repeating myself. Likewise, he also has scleral show, which I've already spoken about. His eyebrows are also too far away from his eyes. And finally, also to do with his eyes, and this last flaw is partially responsible for causing each of the ones I just spoke about, is the fact that his eye orbits are too large and rounded, when ideally they should be more horizontal and compact. Moving on to some other flaws is that his nose is a little bit asymmetrical. It's not really that noticeable, nowhere near as bad as John Anthony's. However, it's still noteworthy nonetheless. And finally, I've also noticed that one of his ears is asymmetrical from the other, which I'm not sure what the story was about this, whether he was born with it or if it was a result of some kind of accident involving a dog or maybe something else. So after all of this taken into account, I'm going to be rating his facial attractiveness as a 6 out of 10. However, that said, SMV wise, I'm going to be bumping him up to a 7. I mean, the dude is jacked and over 6 foot, and these are definitely factors that you can't ignore. Now, in my experience of watching Hamza's content, it appears he has achieved most of his results from women in the club environment. And now me thinking about this, his features are excellently tailored towards doing extremely well in a club environment. Because when you think about a club, you're thinking it's crowded with very dark lighting. Now, in such an environment, there are two things that a woman will first notice about you. First is your height and your body. Even if you're 10 to 30 meters away from a person, you're still going to be able to see the outline of these two factors. Moving in closer, anywhere from 2 to 10 meters, you're going to be able to see features such as somebody's jawline and their hair. Going in even closer, less than 2 meters, the last things you're going to notice about a person is their eye area, their skin texture and quality, e.g. if things such as spots are present, and factors such as their teeth and dental hygiene. And bringing it back for a person like Hamza, because he scores excellently well in these departments over here, then he is 100% going to get loads of attention in a club compared with all the other guys. This is why I talk about in my videos you need to play to your strengths in the modern dating market. It's about finding what your strengths are and how you can use them to your advantage to get an edge over everyone else. Finally, moving on to the last person, Lloyd Dixon, also known as the single guy, who is a dating coach with over 100,000 subs. And same again, we'll be starting with the positives. His best feature, in my opinion, is his jawline. A noteworthy part of this is his ramus length. So the ramus, which is this near vertical piece of bone here, Lloyd's is highly visible and has good length, which is very similar to the ideal. Again, similar to some of the other guys, he also has that ideal trapezium-shaped jawline with sharp and rigid angles. He has the ideal compact mid-face ratio of one to one. His hair texture is very good and full of life. He has good eyebrow thickness. And finally, his facial hair and lip thickness is also very ideal. Now moving on to the negatives. Firstly, although his eyebrows are a good thickness and length, they have too much of an aggressive, positive eyebrow tilt. So as spoke about earlier, the eyebrows should have a slight upward slant. And an ideal angle for this is going to be roughly 10 degrees. However, Lloyd's are far steeper than this at roughly 25 degrees, which goes too far past the threshold of seductiveness and gives a more aggressive appearance. And in fact, Lloyd himself is very aware of this particular feature. I took a look at his Instagram and his bio literally states he looks like he's perpetually angry. And the main reason being for this is that his positive eyebrow tilt is too aggressive. Next, he has very noticeable eye bags beneath his eyes. And this could be due to aging, lack of sleep, I'm not sure, maybe a bit of both. Next up, he also has those large and round eye orbits that we've already spoken about. He has a noticeable gap in between his two front teeth. And finally, his hairline looks a fraction too rounded. However, I don't think his hairline is receding. So after taking all of these into account, my final rating for Lloyd is a 6 out of 10. I think he falls right into that high tier normie range. 
So that's the video guys, and these are my final ratings for each of them. If you enjoyed this video, this is in fact part 3, so there are two previous episodes on my channel where I rate and analyse various other YouTube dating coaches. So be sure to check out these as well. Finally, be sure to press the like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below as it helps the YouTube algorithm.